right, this is the last CDX in my possession that I now have working, the Sega CDX or Sega Multi Mega that I have now repaired. I have repaired now five of these, five or six of them in the past month, which is quite a spree. I'm very happy with that. This one was a doozy. This one was not fun to fix and had to do with a uh, PCM failure. I actually had this in storage for a long time. I don't even know how it broke. It's very strange. Uh, but I took it out of storage and the FM audio, the PCM audio, sorry, not the FM, the PCM audio did not work. Uh, the PCM audio plays partly in the intro. The intro title screen on the US BIOS is a mix of FM audio and PCM audio. So audio from the Genesis portion of the sound chip and also from the uh, FM PCM sound chip, which is this guy right here, the 315-5476A. And the FM was totally messed up, and I have no idea why it just was. Um, and so I opened it up, and I found out uh, my other video where I, I show uh, me reflowing a 3155632. If I actually, um, I can actually show you. So the first indicator I had of a problem was I had a board like this. Um, this is from another working CDX, and pin. 104, which I can show you on the 3155632, just this pin right here on the very edge was bad. You can see it says 104 right there. So that pin was bad, which was very strange because that pin goes to the 68K, I think it's 40, 45 on the 68K, uh, which is the 12 megahertz 68K that drives the Sega CD ASIC. That is the only connection that pin makes, and the 68K appeared to be fine. Uh, when I lifted the pin on the 68K, I saw no short. It was only a short on the Sega ASIC. Very strange, but that address bus is partly responsible for PCM audio. So if that pin is bad, then your PCM audio is definitely going to be bad. So that was the first uh, thing I had to do, was I had to replace this whole chip that sucks. That is a really hard job. Um, you have to get this board amazingly hot to do any reflow work because it's a four ply PCB with a lot of copper on the internal layers. And so it, it took almost like 10 minutes or something ridiculous to get this heated up enough where I could remove it. And then you do have to worry about board warping. So I had to do a very long cool down period with a very uh, carefully monitored temperature settings. Uh, very difficult stuff to do. I don't recommend it for any amateurs out there or any people that are new to this. Uh, it's new to reflowing. Uh, and I mean, by reflowing, I don't mean using a hairdryer or something. I mean professional reflowing. Uh, it's very tricky work. But I did that. I replaced this ASIC, and it still didn't work. Uh, so that was a huge bummer, because I was like, well, what the heck? Uh, and so after that, I went ahead, and I'm like, well, what else is there? Um, if the ASIC doesn't work, and the 68K is fine, or appears to be fine then my next step, of course, is going to be replacing the PCM audio chip itself. Um, and I measured some stuff along the bus and everything. Nothing looked bad. Uh, so I, and I'm like, well, if I'm going to replace the PCM audio, I might as well replace the PCM RAM chip, which is this chip right here, at the same time. They're right next to each other. Reflowing is really bad, you know, to do a lot of the time, you know, if you do it over and over again on a, on a board. And so I figure, well, let's just do both of them. They're next to each other. So uh, this is the board we're actually... I did both of them, reflowed both of these guys. As you can tell, some of the flux is still there a little bit. Um, and that was nasty, and that was not fun. So, found two from a donor board, put them back on, still didn't work. Uh, and so I was pretty bummed by that. And I was like, well, it's time to start tracing out connections and really checking out every single thing on the bus. I'm looking for shorts, there's no shorts. Turns out, make a long story short, what was actually the problem, uh, I have no idea how this happened. And usually when things break, I have a very good concept of how it happened, and that's really important, because you want to know how things break. But uh, all it was, I shouldn't say all it was, what it was, was pin 1 and pin, so pin 24 here. Pin 24 is the operation enable active low signal for the PCM RAM. And it's tied to pin one, and then it also goes to the uh, the PCM audio chip. So the PCM audio chip gives a signal and turns on its own RAM, essentially. Um, that signal might actually also come from the Sega ASIC, but nonetheless, it's an important, very important pin. I mean, if you don't have operation enable, you're not gonna have your chip enabled. 
And for whatever reason, on my working unit, pin one and pin 24 are connected. They're, it's, a, it's a straight connection in the, the PCB itself. It has nothing to do with the operation of the chip. And when this thing broke, however it broke, when it broke that ASIC, it, you know, through some internal VA or whatever, uh, it blew out the connection between pin one and pin 24 on this RAM chip. Talk about a hard to find problem. Uh, but, uh, yeah, fortunately going down, doing my process of elimination and, you know, my, my, my repair flow and trying so many other things, nailed it to just those, uh, just that last, those, those two problems and this specifically this last one. So with this wire here, this actually works perfect. I'm going to clean it up and make it a shorter wire, but, uh, and I'm putting a new battery. But aside from that, this is a working CDX. All the CDXs in my possession are now repaired and working. Very good stuff. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.